Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is 8th lecture of this segmentary series. And in this lecture we are going to see and study what is merge sort tree. So before we start learning new thing, let's just recap what we have done till, uh, till now. So we have already studied what is segmentary and we know how to implement it. We know how to perform point updates in login time. We already know that how lazy propagation is implemented and what is the use of lazy propagation. We can update the whole range in log n time. So these are the things that we have already studied and they are, uh, based on these concepts, we have also solved one or two problems each from every concept. Now the question arises, what is Merso tree and why do we need it? so the before answering that uh let's see some of the problem that segmentary may not be able to help us with see the first problem is you are given an array of size n and there are q queries queries are of the form l r and k that is l and r represent the range and k is one of the other parameter for the query so we have to find the number of elements in the range which are strictly smaller than k or other other variation of the same problem can be uh, how many elements in the range l to r are there such that they are greater than equals to k so we have to answer these queries and just pause the video for some time and try to answer for yourself that how would you implement this problem and how would you answer this problem in log n time for each query or even let's take log n square time because the way I will be uh, explaining you to solve this problem using merge sort tree that would require log n square for each query so uh, try to uh, solve this problem just try to think how would you apply segmentary to solve this problem and see whether segmentary can help us solve this problem or not for example this is the input array and for the range 1 to 5 how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than four so uh, for from first five elements there are two elements one and three which are strictly smaller than four so the answer is two seven to ten uh, last four elements i guess out of those uh, the number of element which are strictly smaller than four are three which are three two and one so the answer is three so this is first type of problem that i wanted to explain you and this is we will learn that how we can apply merge sort tree to solve these kind of problem and just pause the video and try to think how uh, is it even possible to solve this problem using segmentary now this was one of the problems let's have a look at another problem in which segmentary may not help us so the other problem is again the same uh, we are given an array of size n and there are q queries and each time a query is of the form lr and we have to find the number of unique elements in the range L to R. This problem I think we have already solved on the spot using Mo's algorithm. But the problem with Mo's algorithm is that you have to know all of the queries beforehand. That is, you uh, the Mo's algorithm is actually uh, an offline algorithm. That means all of the query you must know. The all uh, online queries are those in which you have to answer the ith query to be able to answer the i plus one query but in segmentary oh uh, sorry in most algorithm that is not the case in most algorithm you must know all of the query already before answering any query so you can manipulate the order of the queries but here suppose the query is online so you have to give the answer of the ith query before you can answer i plus one query basically you cannot reorder the the ordering of the queries in that case, Mo's algorithm is not applicable. So just think, how would you apply a segmentary to solve this problem? Again, the problem is you are given n numbers and q queries. Each query gives you a range and you have to find the number of unique elements in that range. For example, 1, 2, 5, there are uh, three unique elements, 1, 3, and uh, one, three and 4, 1, 2, 5. Oh, there are 4, I guess, 1, 3, 4, and 6. Yeah, there are 4. Um, uh, there is a typo. So in, in the range 1 to 5, the answer should be 4, not 3, because 1, 3, 4, and 6, there are 4 unique elements. Now, from last 4 elements, there are only 2 unique elements, 3 and 2, the answer is 2. 
uh, so the answer is 2 so these are the two problems uh, that I want you to think how you can apply uh, segmentary to solve this problem just think even segmentary can you uh, can send segmentary help you to solve this problem or not and just don't worry if if segmentary is not able, applicable on this problem we will be learning merge sortry uh, and after learning the, uh, merge sortry you will be able to solve these kind of problems very easily and remember some of these problems can be solved using uh, persistent segmentary we will be studying pers uh, persistent segmentary later in this course just uh, after maybe after merge sortry now these were only two problems let me show you some of the problems which are really interesting for example this problem the problem is from hacker rank the problem name is coloring tree and the problem as you can see is hard and you'll get 120 marks for this and only 76 submission till now now the problem is you are given uh, a tree with n nodes and all of the node is having uh, all of the nodes are having certain color and color can be uh, color is identified by uh, uh, color is represented by integer from 1 to 10 power 9 so the query is you are given q queries or basically m queries and you, uh, you each time you are given a node so in the sub tree uh, first of all the node uh, the tree is rooted so in each query you will be given a node and you have to consider the subtree of that node and you have to tell the number of unique colors present in the subtree of that node this is the problem the problem is hard and you'll get 120 marks until now only 76 submission and this problem is again can be solved using merge sort tree we'll see how it is possible and one important thing uh, i would like to tell you is that as you can see this is a tree which is non-linear data structure while uh, merge sort tree or segment tree is only applicable on uh, array which is actually a linear data structure so what we will be doing is uh, is that we'll be flattening the tree using DFS. So if you have no idea what is flattening of tree, go. Uh, you can learn from uh, the lecture series uh, query on tree. There is a playlist queries on namely queries on tree on my channel where you can learn how you how you can uh, apply tree flattening. And you must know that because I'm not going to explain tree flattening here because I have already explained that in tree queries uh, lecture series. So we will be solving this problem as well using of course a uh, merge or tree. Another problem I want to show you is that this educational round 33 F problem subtree minimum query. In this problem, you are given a Q queries, a rooted tree which is rooted on one, I guess, and each node is having certain value AI, right? So you'll be given Q queries, queries of the form of D and K, I guess, X and K, where X is the node, and you have to consider all of the uh, all of the nodes in the subtree of X, but only those nodes whose distance with x is less than equals to k so all of the nodes in the subtree of x such that the distance with x is less than equals to k and you have to return or print answer of the query is the minimum value among such nodes so this is the problem uh, you can see the problem is rated 2300 and we will be solving this problem as well again this is a tree which is non-linear data structure we will be converting this into a linear data structure using dfs and after that, we'll be solving this problem using merge sort tree. So, uh, before explaining what is merge sort tree, sorry, before explaining what is merge sort tree, uh, it was important. I believe it was important you to know why you even need to learn merge sort tree. And these are some of the examples why uh, merge sort tree is really really important. So now that we have seen what kind of problem we can apply merge sort tree on and how how merge sort tree can be used to solve some of the very difficult problems i uh, like different uh, different difficult problems it can be applied to solve problems on array it can be applied to solve problems even uh, on tree or subtree so let's see let me give you a little idea how merge sort tree is different than uh, segment tree there, there is not much difference between these two there is only a little different and that comes inside only the implementation part not in the overall part the queries are the same the way you build segmentary is same the way you query the segmentary is same the way you update the uh, oh man oh okay no the updates are not as similar uh, i mean not much similar they are similar but not much similar uh it, it, it makes sense if the implementation change of course the update change as well so 
nevertheless let's see this is a normal segment tree which stores the sum of uh, which is used to uh, give you the sum of range so this represents the range sum of 4 to 8 so if you have a query of range sum 4 to 8 of course you would come here you see that okay this doesn't lie completely inside the query range so you would make two recursive calls towards left and right or you already know this you would come here you see okay 5 to 8 lies completely inside your query range which is 4 to 8 so you would return direct sum from here from here you would see okay there is partial overlap you would make recursive call to here and here and this is completely outside so it would return zero you would come here again two recursive calls left and right from here you would return zero 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 and from here you would return 11 so the overall sum is 11 as you can see from 4 to 8 0 plus 8 plus 3 plus 0 plus 0 the overall result is 11 this is how segment tree works right but what persistence segment tree does is suppose this was the tree and this this is the array and the question is actually uh, instead of asking the sum in the range l to r let's say the, the question is let's make it in some uh, let's make it interesting so you are given l r and k you have to print the total sum of element which are lie in the range which lie in the range l to r and all of the elements which are strictly smaller than k so l2 in the range l to r you have to print the sum of all integers which are strictly smaller than k so suppose k is 3 in this case so, sorry k is 4 in this case so uh, 4 8 and 4 4 is k so the result is going to be 3 only because in the whole range only uh, uh, 3 and zeros all of these are strictly smaller than 4 so the result is going to be 3 the overall sum is going to be 3 now the question is this segment uh, the problem is this segment tree is not able to answer this type of query that i just asked lr and k type of query so for that what we would do in the uh, in my tree what we do instead of storing the result of the range what we do at each node we store the actual sub array that this node represents this node represents the sub array 5 to 8 so what we would do at this node instead of storing 11 we would keep a vector or an array of size 4 and this whole sub, sub array we will be storing there similarly this node represents 5 to 6 so this this sub array will be there similarly for this this represents 7 to 8 so this sub array we will be storing there instead of only 0 or 11 and so on so in pers uh, so in merge sort tree what we do instead of storing only the result we keep the whole sub array in there that's why the space complexity increases i guess yeah the space complexity increases but uh but now we are able to answer the question that uh, the kind of question that i just asked lr and k in the range l to r print the sum of all integers which are strictly smaller than k in, uh, in fact the time complexity uh, sorry the space complexity is n log n which is not too much you can handle that uh, so now in the next lecture i'll be showing you the implementation uh, implementation some of the examples and also we'll be study the time and the space complexity for the queries like this lr and k so this was all for uh, all this was uh, this was all for this lecture i know uh, some things might might have went over your head but don't worry we'll be taking an example and we'll be learning all of this uh, by diagrams and and things which you can uh, see so seeing is believing so you'll be seeing how merge sortry actually works and how smart it is to use merge sortry some of the problems which we have seen so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the uh, until the next video drops keep coding thank you